Hello, my name is Jupiter Hadley, and today we're doing another version of Jupiter Plays All the Games, this time with the Proc Jam. The Proc Jam, or the Procedural Generation Jam, is about making something that makes something. Uh, these are not all necessarily games, some of them are tools, or asset packs, or other things, but I'm going to be checking out everything that was entered into this jam for about a minute each. Links to the individual games in the description, so you can check them out further. About 10 per video. All my info will also be in the description, so you can check me out on social media and see my stuff as well. This video, as always, is brought to you in part by the lovely people on Patreon who support me so I can continue to do all of this and record all of this. If you want to support me, there's a link to that too. At the end, I'll probably have an article of my favorites. Thank you very much for watching, liking, and commenting. Next. We're checking out the Worksheet Saga. This game is for Excel Spreadsheet, which I don't have and I've used up my free trial for Word unfortunately. However, um, it seems like a really cool idea. So basically there's an algorithm that encourages emergent and engaging play using color simple rules and the familiar Excel elements to create a unique interactive experience. So the goal of this game is to have the board labeled react to be in all of one color, either blue or pink. So there's some pictures of some boards on the side. Any of the white any white cell with three blue neighbors will turn blue. Any white cell with fewer than two blue cells around it will turn white. Any cell with three blue cells around it will turn pink. Any cell with three pink cells around it will turn blue. So there's lots of uh, different ways to sort of change the colors, it seems. Um, clicking on the rule change button will allow you to change those rules. All right. Reset will clear the board. Randomize will fill the board accordingly. I can only fill up the board 30%. That's fair. So you on the next cell. I don't know. I've never really thought about developing something for Microsoft Excel. That's such an interesting idea and such a unique game. Like the action is moving those dots over there, moving the dots, and then we've got reaction, which is all of those turning white. Huh, interesting. Next, we're playing spinneret. Oh, this is interesting. So there are two ways you can play this. Um, you can uh, build your own stuff, have a good time doing that, and then play it around. Or you can be more objective based and find some beacons and activate them. I think I'm gonna do the beacons route. Oh, how do I? Oh wait, I can draw a line. I was like, oh, I can just jump this, right? No, let's draw some lines. Cause we can create the tools that we need. So why wouldn't we just do that? Duh. All right, let's get on the actual ramp. Cool, cool. I like how rickety it looks because someone's made it. Yeah, see mine weren't very good either. Where's the little blue thing? There it is. Okay. Do you do you not want to connect there? Well, I just wanna like a little bit over. Bam. And then a couple more times probably because this won't be enough to hold me. I don't walk very straight. Oh, it's so easy to like click and drag and build these as well. All right, that's a bridge. That's a bridge that we built. It doesn't even go to the end, but I thought it did. Awesome. Hey beacon, there you go. Oh, I should have probably made more bridges. We can. Ooh, what's this? Feels like these like houses all pushed together. It's a very interesting game. I like the fact that we can build what we want. Next. We're checking out Spoids. Um, so basically this game takes the idea of the video game Spore into an environment of using Boyd particle systems. Spoids is an ingenious name and titles the user dragging the mouse across the screen to activate individual specs of cells. Um, so yeah, they're randomly assigned. It seems like a really cool idea. I don't know what a PDE file is. To me, I don't know, a Photoshop document? I feel like, no, that's not. I don't know what it is, but the, in the read me, it still gives you no information on how to actually run it. But it talks about um, how this is used for a game AI course, which is pretty cool. And that basically you want to use Boyd's to attempt to mimic the general style of the game Spore. At the current level, uh, upon each mouse drag across the screen, the user will create an individual species or colony of cells that have their own attributes. It's interesting um, generating attributes for different types of um, creatures almost, or different types of enemies. And that's a cool way to use procedural generation. I wish I knew how to run a PDE file. Or I wish there was a DXE or something. Here's a picture. 
Next. We're playing Cave Cavalvers. Let's play a tutorial. Look around using mouse. Move with WSD. Got it. Oh, the words disappear. Oh, okay. Um, well, in the caverns, pressing tab will show a map of where you are and where you've been. Right, well, tab's not doing anything. You can always press escape to return to the main menu. Entering the ship will begin the rescue, and entering the shop will allow you to buy equipment. Right, I feel like this is far easier. Shoot with left mouse. All of you guys are dead. Oh, ooh. Uh, collect things from chests will help you on your rescue missions. Just the key to get past the boss. How do I open them? Shoot them. Chests take a lot of uh, hits. Okay, we've got a key. Once entering the door, you must kill the boss to survive. They will fight back. Wow, so there's a bit of like um, what is it called? An arc to my shots. Ooh, goodbye. Let's go. Right, map successfully created. Cool. So that's our map. It just shows the first room we've been in, which is very overrun with monsters. I like how my legs are just some spinny things. Yeah, there are a lot of monsters in here. Please go away. I kind of want to head that way, but I'm also afraid of all the crossfire from these two. So I've kind of carved out that area of the map. And then we'll go. There's two chests over here. So we've got some coins, some hearts. That'll be good. Sort of like a dungeon crawler, but an open world. But with huge walls and buildings that we can't enter. Crawler. Lots of boxes. Alright, some more coins. It's a neat little game. Next. We're checking out OO underscore crazy. I think basically it makes this sort of map. And we can kind of zoom into the map, zoom out of the map look at it from different view angles and travel around and see what was made. Hmm. Those like little animals? No, they're little rock formations. When you're this zoomed in it looks like you're running. They're like highlighted even. I don't know what that means. Oh no. no I want to be really close to them so I can see them being highlighted. Wish we could go into them almost and explore around these ruins. It's a nice little map to look around though. It feels natural, you know? That makes sense. Little island in the middle of the water. Different types of green terrain. And even some snow. Next. We're playing uh, Flubby's Island Adventures. <clears throat> We're going to pretend my voice isn't as crap as it is. Okay. And it's building some terrain for us. Mm. Or not, maybe. Right, so I refreshed it, and now I'm going to let it build its thing. And it's just going to build its little island. Come back after it's done. Right, so it built it, added some trees, lots of little detail. Hello, I'm Meredith. Okay, hi Meredith. Right, we can move around with WSD. Oh, we're not the turtle. Oh, the turtle follows us. Okay. We can just explore the island. The graphics are super cute in this. Ooh, what? I get a safety hat for walking on the bridges. Oh, because we can, like, go into a boat. Oh. Turtle guy, come follow us. Come here. You know it's an island. Uh, I know it's an island, but weather is... Weather, it's chilly. Island weather, but it's chilly. Thanks for playing the demo, by the way. No worries. It's a really cute little demo. It's a very, very good start. I'm the 11 little turtle friend. Next. 
We're playing Infinite Debris, tech demo. Like, this is a tech demo is what I'm saying. Uh, note, small ships work best for tech demo. Thrusters have been haven't been balanced for larger ships. Right, how much money do I have? Because I feel like I'm going to need some more hulls. And I'm going to need a couple of lasers, probably like that. Oh, that's like thrusters, a couple of thrusters, and then... Well, you're not attached to anything, so we'll get rid of you. I see. Alright, I kind of want lasers on the side, though. Alright. We'll kind of go like this as well. Is this enough lasers? Is there ever enough lasers? That looks good. That looks like a good ship. Alright, let's test it. I mean, there's lots of other ships around here. Much better ships than mine. But I was never that good at building ships, so. Movement feels pretty good. I never know if my ship will end up being, like, too heavy, you know? A lot of these had the dot as the back, like, in the back, but I thought the dot would be the middle. So, yeah, so far you can just basically make your own ships and then go back to the editor and mess around with them. It's a very good start. I like creating my own ships. Aw, oh, lasers. <laughs> Next. We're playing Dragon Slayer. I've played this game a little bit now um, because it keeps changing window size, which makes it really hard to, um, to you know, record. There's a dragon in this cave. I'm going to get to it at the end of the minute because if I die, it'll change the window size and mess up the recording. Um, however, I really like the environment that's built around, like, clearly these are things that the dragon ate, like other dragons, maybe, or I kind of want to live inside this one. That'd be a good home, put a tarp over it. Yeah, I like the graphics a lot, they're really nice. Just kind of running around. I guess you can find other weapons and stuff, maybe. I feel like you must need another weapon to kill the dragon, because I surely can't kill it. It's a palm tree. We're camping out so close to the dragon's cave as well. Up on this little hill. Maybe if we hit E. Yeah, there's nothing in you. Nothing in you. Okay. Shall we go see the dragon? He'll probably kill me. Alright. Oh, hi. Oh, he's coming out to get me. He's got so much health, you can sort of see it above his head right now. He's got a lot of health. But I don't really want to die, so... It's a cool looking dragon. Next, we're checking out Terrain Explorer. This kind of looks like Pokemon. This looks a lot like Pokemon. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are Pokemon graphics because I used to have clubhouses in those types of trees. And I used to be very excited to find those types of trees so that they could be my clubhouse. If that makes sense. I don't know how many people played Pokemon and made little clubhouses. I made mine outside berry bushes, planted berries there, and then was always very sad when the berries were gone the next time I came over. That's where it came from. Hmm. It's very hilly, this area. It feels very sectioned off. It looks nice. Oh. I think this is it. I think this is everywhere we can actually go to. I kind of wish the land... Oh, we can walk across the water. Oh, we can't walk across those stones. Okay, that's fair. But it just generates a bunch of uh, terrain. Go this way. Cool. Next. We're playing timelines. Welcome to Timelines. Timelines creates a procedurally generated population going back generations across family and celestial lines. This tool creates an entire world of NPCs, from bright young children to ancestors long gone, ready to fill your worlds. You can enter a negative number of dates uh, and generate, click to generate your own population. I'm just going to hit generate there. So we kind of balloon. Oh wow, there's lots of people. So you can sit here and you can read what they're up to. I can't really read it though because the font's so tiny. And then you can kind of connect them to other people and see how everyone is connected. You kind of like change the view. I didn't mean like clip below. I meant kind of clip up. There we go. Okay. So we've got like these people are connected, sort of. I don't know why it resets our view. 
But I think this is a really cool idea, sort of uh, procedurally generating ancestry and more culture-related stuff. It's such an interesting idea, and it's... Oh, there's graves. Sorry, I was a bit perplexed by the graves, but I guess they're people who are no longer alive. It's so, like this grave made those three people. Huh. I think it's such a cool way to use procedural generation that's not just like creating more terrain, it's something a bit deeper, like creating depth to characters. Huh. Next. <laughs>